Hello everyone, welcome to Warrior Chat. I'm Wayne McCullough. We have a very, very interesting topic today as we talk about the 2011-2012 Southern York County School District school year academic achievement. And we have two experts to share information with us. The first is Dr. Tom Hensley, our superintendent of schools. Doc, nice to have you. Thank you, Wayne. And also Mrs. Sandra Lamont, who is our assistant superintendent. So, Sandy, nice to have you also. Thanks, Wayne. Great to be here. Uh, when I say they're experts, I don't say that uh, flippantly or even without good reason because under the leadership of Dr. Hensley and now Mrs. Lamont, uh, Southern York County School District really has risen from what I refer to as average uh, from an educational standpoint over the last 14 years uh, to really to be one of the top tiered school districts in all of York County as it relates to our academic achievement. So, I'm happy you're with us and we want to share some of that information with you today and uh, perhaps go a little depth, in-depth uh, discussion about what some of that means. First of all, uh, Doc, I know I'll start with you, uh, really one of the positive outcomes uh, that you would have is obviously the graduates and the success they have and I know not only data uh, but anecdotally you get a lot of stories from our graduates about uh, how they feel they were prepared here at Susquehanna High School in Southern York County School District. Well, Wayne, we have our youngsters uh, who go on and we feel they're well-rounded when they leave here, not only with academics, but also some of them played athletics, some of them were in clubs, some of them were in the band. But one of the things I like when youngsters come back to see us is I do ask them, how do we do? And most of the youngsters, 99.9% .9 of them that I've spoken with, said they were well prepared for college. And that, to me, is the true litmus test. If they come back and say, I was able to do papers at college without a problem. I had other people from my floor coming and asking me how to do term papers, things of that nature. So they have been well prepared, both uh, in the academic world as well as the social world. Mrs. Lamont, share some of the data with us in terms of uh, college graduate uh, percentage that go into higher education and so forth, please. Absolutely. We had 79% of our 2012 graduates last year actually go on to higher education, so we're absolutely thrilled with those numbers. And in addition to that, over 160 scholarships were received with that group of students. So really very, very proud. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll see this slide at home. But uh, as Mrs. Lamont said, 160 scholarships, but the total was $1.8 million. Amazing. That is amazing. That was earned by our, our high school seniors as they graduated and moved on uh, to higher education. Uh, you know, one of the ways to measure student achievement, Mrs. Lamont, is as it relates to standardized testing. Uh, give us some data, but also maybe please give us some background of, of how the tests are done and who is tested and so forth. Absolutely. Well, taking a look at our standardized testing, that it is the PSSA, the Pennsylvania System of School Assessment, and each district, according to No Child Left Behind, is required to meet what we call AYP, adequate yearly progress. And there's certain benchmarks of performance that we need to actually hit um, in regard to student performance. And when you take a look at our performance in the area, those the subject areas that are measured are reading, mathematics, and writing. And students from grades three through eight, and also grade 11 last year, were tested in those areas. And our district performance in the area of mathematics is at 87.4, whereas the state's only at 75.7. .7. Our achievement in the area of reading was at 83.2. The state average only being 71%, and that students at the advanced or proficient range. And then in the area of writing, we were at 84.7 of our students advanced or proficient, and the state level was only at 73.2. So when we look statistically, anything over 10 percentage points is really significant, mm -hmm. and that's where we're hitting the mark throughout uh, all of our grade levels in that area of performance. Good. Good. Doc, I consider you uh, uh, an excellent educator, obviously. You spend a lot of time in the classroom, but what do these numbers mean to you, uh, the success of this data? I think it just shows that we have phenomenal teachers, Wayne. I think it starts with our teachers in the classroom, and our teachers really care about youngsters and their success. Mm -hmm. They take benchmark data of youngsters, and that is, benchmarks means that they try to take a, a snapshot of a youngster at the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year, and towards the end of the year as to what are their strengths, what areas they need to improve upon. So our teachers are really diagnostic in their teaching. They really understand what our needs are of our youngsters. And because of that, our youngsters have been able to achieve to great heights. 
Mrs. Lamont, the, uh, obviously you need, uh, Doc mentioned teachers, but you need teachers uh, who are not only well educated, but also are well prepared in the classroom every lesson they take in in order to receive these kind of results. Talk a little bit about the professional development that the teachers receive uh, and then their ability to uh, put that to work every day in the classroom. Absolutely. Well, it is a combination of, as Tom said, certainly our, our outstanding abilities of our teachers but we strongly believe that our teachers we owe that resources the resources to them the professional development so that they can be as highly trained as possible so our professional development is happening year-round it mm -hmm. happens in the summer through summer academies it happens in our faculty meetings we are constantly seeking through teachers what more support do they need in different areas and we're providing that to the teachers so that they can go into the classroom and be able to provide the best quality instruction. Very good. Uh, let's break this down a little bit. You mentioned uh, mathematics. Uh, I think uh, we'll focus in on this slide, but to me this data is just tremendous and uh, the fact that Southern York County School District, when compared with all 14 York County School Districts, ranks second in math with 87, really 87.5% of our students uh, performing that advanced or proficient. What what do those words mean, advanced or proficient? Uh, can you break that down for us, Mrs. Lamont? Sure. Well, they are, when we take a look at the PSSA assessment, the statewide assessment, those students are scoring their cutoff score, ranks them within that area of meeting proficient standards or advanced standards as aligned to the Pennsylvania standards. So what we're teaching every single day, that they're able to you know, in a summative way, show that that's the level of mastery they have in those areas. And Doc, I know uh, both of you uh, are very, very proud of the achievements of our special education children also. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit and, and the importance to that, but also how that's achieved? Well, I think, again, we don't separate our youngsters by uh, classifications, and I think that's one of the things with instruction. We, we believe good instruction is good instruction, whether that's with um, our students that are uh, without learning disabilities or students that have learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. So our expectations are just as high for those youngsters. And the special education teachers also receive the same staff development that our regular teachers do. So we do have high expectations not only for our regular ed students but our special needs students as well. Let's look at the reading results. Again, Southern ranked third with 83% of our children performing at advanced or proficient, again, as compared to all York County school districts. And here's again, our special education students rank second uh, as it relates to reading. Uh, so again, very, very impressive uh, are those results. The SAT, the Scholastic Aptitude Tests, uh, before the results, uh, Doc, what, why is that benchmark still important? Well, that's how you usually judge a high school is to see how their students are doing with the SAT test. And that's a test that most colleges use for uh, consideration for admissions. So again, it really measures the achievement in math, critical reading, and writing. And our youngsters have excelled, as you'll see with the slide that you'll show up there. But if you can see with the slide that we're way above uh, the state average and also the national average. So it's one indicator, and I want to stress, it's one indicator of the success that you have academically at a high school setting. And again, we're very proud of uh, what our students have been able to achieve. Mrs. Lamont, you want to explain the results here, please? Yeah, and certainly looking at all 14 York County school districts, we have ranked second in the area of critical reading at, uh, with a score of 522. And as Tom said, that's way above the state average and the national average. And third in mathematics, at our score being 528. And that, again, is above the state and the nationwide average. And then in the area of writing, our students ranked second in all of York County in terms of those averages of those test scores. Looking at the, the SAT, uh, 800 in each of those areas mm -hmm. being a perfect score that a child could receive. You know, the first thing, and I'm, I'm a numbers guy, but the first thing that jumps out at me is uh, that all those levels, critical reading, math, and writing, are in the top three. Uh, two of them being two, so I, I guess I mentioned that because, okay, you, so you did well at math, uh, but then those same children are also succeeding in reading uh, as well as writing, so to have, to be in that top tier, that top two and three of all school districts in York County in all three areas is what I find impressive and probably more if you just broke it down from a statistical thing, probably you'd think, well, that's not even possible, but it is, and uh, the results are amazing.
And that, that's a good point, Wayne, because that really shows that there's consistency, quality instruction happening across the board in all classrooms from mm -hmm. all of our teachers. Now, you have, a, you have a child in college at Gettysburg College. The, uh, are, are those tests still important as children trying to get into colleges? They are. And okay. some colleges, as Dr. Hensley said, um, are not using those as much as a, as a direct admissions uh, test, but but for the most part across the board, across the country, we're still using the SAT scores. The reason I think this is also important as an SAT, it's a standard test that's given nationwide. So again, you're able to compare apples to apples. So you're able to compare how your students are doing on a national level compared with other students of the same caliber as well as the state. That's why this is one facet of a test that's important. Interesting. The advanced placement program. First of all, Mrs. Lamont, please explain what advanced placement is and then we'll look at the results. Yeah. Well, the advanced pa placement program is actually courses that we offer here that are aligned uh, college level courses and okay. it prepares students to the rigor of what exactly they would expect with a college course. And when they actually take the final test at the end, the placement test, if they score a score of three, four, or five, they can actually earn college credit as well too. So many of our students are leaving our high school already with college credits under under their transcript to be able to go in. Interesting. Now, Doc, I know this was a major focus of yours. Uh, in fact, I even remember almost 14 years ago when you interviewed that you talked uh, to the interview team about advanced placement courses and bringing them into the Southern York County School District. So we've seen them grow during your tenure. Why has it been such a focus for you as superintendent? Well, I think, Wayne, it really gives an opportunity for our students to experience what it's like in college. These are college-level courses that are being taught. And again, it's a national uh, type of course. So again, at the end, to score three, four, or five, that is being measured nationally. It's the same test that they're given here in Pennsylvania as well as California. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, it gives the opportunity for the youngster to experience college-level work, but also it can help the parents financially. If the youngster can earn some of these college credits, I know one particular youngster uh, last year mm -hmm. who went in and, and bypassed his freshman year because wow. he had enough credits for advanced placement to bypass. So that really helps the parents financially where they're only paying for three years of college rather than four. Well, you talk financially. I mean, I, I don't know the college starts at fifteen, twenty thousand, and up to thirty, forty thousand plus. So mm -hmm. that is incredible. Look at look at this Absolutely. data. Absolutely. Just look at this data. Uh, 244 students, high school students, participated in the advanced placement program, and 89% of them uh, received the grade that would allow them uh, to earn college credit mm -hmm. for that. And that that's just incredible. Uh, what does that say, Mrs. Lamont? Well, again, it shows that it's well be teachers that are well trained, that that are really working very closely in a differentiated approach to make sure they're they're providing that rigor and meeting each student's needs. So at the end, when they go to take that test, they can the students are demonstrating mastery in all of that learning. So it's it's a partnership between hardworking students and really high quality teachers. No, again, that I, that number is staggering. Eighty nine percent of the students. Uh, passed out of that college course or had the because of their score. That, Absolutely. That's really amazing. Uh, so, uh, you know, we looked at a variety of benchmarks, uh, PSSA results in terms of how our children did their SAT results, advanced placement results. Uh, uh, Doc, uh, are you happy where we are? Are you content, or what's next? Well, well you're never content. You okay. always, you always want to strive. You say that. Yeah, you being a former coach, you know right. what I'm saying. You're never content. You always want to do better, even if it's a little better. But I think again, we are really dedicated to having effective instruction in the classroom. And one of the things that I just want to highlight is this past year. As an administrative team, we spent uh, a whole year previously to this year looking at effective instruction. And I'd just like to take a moment to explain that if yeah. I can. We took a whole year and tried to identify as administrators what did we see that were elements that we wanted to see with instruction every day. And we came up with five areas, and if I can, I'll just read Please. them to you. But it's relationships with students, data-driven lessons that we see teachers use based upon what kids need, the engagement of youngsters in authentic tasks, 
in the classroom. And then we looked to see differentiation. Where was the teacher differentiating instruction for certain youngsters in the classroom? And then finally, the real kicker is what evidence of student learning took place. And I have to give a lot of credit to Sandy. Uh, Sandy was the one who spearheaded this initiative as the assistant superintendent. And really, we have all administrators from from elementary, middle, and high who agree that these five components are what we want to see when we go into the classroom with teachers. The teachers have been given staff development on this and the teachers have agreed that this, these, this model is something that they should be doing in the classroom. So this has put a great focus on to what we want to see in, with the instruction because many times you'll have people say, well, what are you looking for? Well, here are the items we're looking for. There's no doubt in anybody's mind. Teachers know what we're looking for. Teachers know that this is good instruction so they're looking to do it each and every day. It's interesting. You mentioned the instruction practices. Uh, Sandy, it also takes, as you, we already talked about staff development, it takes putting the right tools in the hands of our teachers uh, and obviously our students. It takes a uh, well thought out uh, curriculum. Uh, can you tell us your focus uh, as, first of all, we look at our success and why it's successful, but also how do we move forward? Well, one of the big initiatives that we have in front of us right now is a full adoption of the Common Core curriculum, which will actually be a nationwide curriculum. So we are realigning our curriculum to move beyond just the PA Pennsylvania state standards, but a Common Core curriculum that is in 40 plus states. So that will increase the rigor in the area of mathematics and reading even more so. So by aligning that curriculum to those higher standards, then we are very confident that we'll continue to see continuous performance and growth from our students. Talk about the academic achievement here at Southern York County School District for the 2011-2012 school year, but also uh, thinking ahead here uh, with Mrs. Lamont and Dr. Hensley. Doc, uh, you've been a major part of our community now for the past 14 years. You're active not only to school district, but with Rotary and uh, probably as well known as anyone in the community at this point. Uh, and I, I've heard you say it, but it does take a whole community and we're very fortunate to have a strong community that supports our academic program. Oh, absolutely, Wayne. I mean, the ingredients for success has to start with the Board of Education. We could not do anything without the board support here. And our board right now is one of two boards that has been chosen by the mm -hmm. state as an ex exemplary board. And when you, to get that honor, our board members do not have agendas. Our board members use a filter when they make decisions. And the filter is what is best for students and what the taxpayer can afford. When you have a supportive board who will back you with initiatives, and then you have outstanding teachers, outstanding administrators, great kids, and very supportive parents and community members, you're going to have a very successful school district. And we're fortunate and blessed to have all those combinations in place. Absolutely, and, and Dr. Hensley had already mentioned the outstanding work, uh, Mrs. Lamont, you have done with our building administrators uh, to work on the essential components of our instructional program. Uh, we thank the teachers and obviously we mentioned the administrators, but uh, it doesn't happen without the day-to-day -day support and interaction and work that takes place uh, by our building principals. Can you mention that a little bit, please? Oh, our building administrators fully see themselves as instructional leaders and they are monitoring what's happening in classrooms each and every day. They are serving as role models to ensure that our students are making the greatest growth that they can as learners. So they pride themselves in staying current with best practices, supporting the teachers, and mm -hmm. ensuring that instruction is our number one priority, student achievement. Yeah, and I think uh, both of you hand in hand have worked very, very hard to make sure that it's also the culture of every employee here at the school district. Our custodians, our maintenance staff, our bus drivers, our cafeteria staff, uh, who know every day that their work really relates uh, to students being successful here in their schools. And uh, that is a culture that you should be very proud that has been promoted, but also r really adopted by every person that works here, Doc. It really is a team effort, and we can't stress that enough. You have to have good facilities for youngsters to learn. If it's clean, safe, secure, uh, facility youngsters will achieve more. Mm -hmm. If you have youngsters that are fed and we have the cafeteria program with the breakfast program and so forth, again research will bear out that youngsters who are hungry don't don't do as well as as they could in schools. Um, and again it's a it's such a team effort from our maintenance staff, our custodial staff, our food service staff, our clerical staff, and that's why when we open the school year up each year 
we make sure all of those groups are there to be recognized because it's just not the teachers, it's just not administrators. It really is a combination when we say a whole village is needed to, to raise a child. That's truly uh, what this district exemplifies. Well, I appreciate the fact that you joined us here on Warrior Chat as we shared this great data as it relates to the achievement of our children here at Southern York County School District. It's something we're very proud of, uh, and we should be, because the success is absolutely tremendous, and it's a balanced, sustained success. It's just not one year. It's mm -hmm. now been several years, and it's bounced throughout the entire academic program. And I think both of you said it. Is, you know, that, first of all, it doesn't happen by accident, but secondly, it's because of good teaching that takes place in the classroom every day. Uh, you might have a good math program, or you might have a good reading program, but to have a good balanced program is what Absolutely. to me is very, very impressive. And your leadership for both of you uh, is really what has led that charge here at Southern York County School District. So I thank you very, very uh, much for that. Thank you. Uh, our community, we thank you for your interest as always. Uh, it's something I'm very, very proud of that our that Southern York County School District community has just a long history of, of valuing education for our children and supporting education for our children. So thank you so very much for your interest. So for Mr. Mark Rill, our coordinator of marketing and public information, for Dr. Hensley, Mrs. Lamont, I'm Wayne McCullough saying I'll see you next time.